In today's video, we embark on the ultimate truck education. So, if you ever wondered why some truck tires don't touch the ground, or why some trucks have such long wheelbases, or just any of these questions, then sit back and enjoy an educational roller coaster. Now, let's get started. Have you ever driven by a truck and seen one or even two of the truck's axles floating above the road and wondered why it's hanging up there? And why not all the wheels touch the ground? Well, actually, there are multiple reasons for it, but let's start with better grip and traction. Lift axles can be lowered when the truck is fully loaded, distributing the weight more evenly among the axles. This increased weight on the tires enhances traction and grip especially in adverse weather conditions like rain, snow, or ice. As an example, Volvo have a tandem axle lift function to really improve grip when needed. Ground pressure. When a truck is fully loaded, it can exert significant pressure on the road surface, potentially causing damage or sinking into softer terrain. By lowering the axle and distributing the weight over several axles, the overall weight is distributed more evenly, reducing the ground pressure and minimizing road wear and tear. Load Adjustments Lift axles allow truck drivers to adjust the weight distribution of the cargo. This is particularly important for complying with weight regulations, as different jurisdictions have specific limits on axle weights. By raising or lowering the lift axles, the driver can ensure that the load is evenly distributed within legal limits. Fuel Efficiency Running additional axles on a truck consumes more fuel due to increased rolling resistance. By lifting the axles when not needed, such as when the truck is empty or carrying a light load, you can improve fuel efficiency. This reduces operating costs and minimizes environmental impact. Legal Regulations Lift axles play a crucial role in complying with weight regulations imposed by local authorities. Overloaded vehicles can incur fines, and lifting or lowering axles allows drivers to adjust their truck's configuration to remain within legal weight limits. Maintenance and Costs Lift axles, like any other component, experience wear and tear over time. However, by raising them when not in use, you reduce the mileage and stress on these axles, extending their lifespan. This leads to lower maintenance costs and less frequent repairs. In addition, the tires also wear less when the axle is lifted and they do not roll along. Safety When a truck is fully loaded, the additional axles provide more braking power because they have more tires making contact with the road surface. This means that the truck can stop more effectively and efficiently, reducing the risk of accidents caused by inadequate braking. Lift axles, when lowered, increase the stability of the truck, especially when navigating corners or during sudden maneuvers. The additional tires help distribute the weight evenly and provide better grip, reducing the likelihood of rollovers or loss of control. Have you ever found yourself wondering why most American semi-truck engines have power outputs of around 500 horsepower? When the smaller European trucks are available with engines with an impressive 770 horsepower? In this video, we'll unravel the multifaceted reasons contributing to this intriguing power imbalance. But first, let's clarify that horsepower isn't the only important metric, as it also needs torque. Horsepower is a unit of power that represents the rate at which work is done or energy is transferred. Torque is a rotational force that causes an object to rotate around an axis. While torque and horsepower are related, they represent different aspects of an engine's performance. Furthermore, the transmission and gearing also play a role in translating engine power to the wheels. So let's get to the first reason why there is such a big difference on the engines. Weight Rules EU vs US one big reason why we don't see truck engines with more than 600 horsepower in the U.S. is because of the weight rules. The federal limit for the weight of semi-trucks in the U.S. is 80,000 pounds, that's 36 tons, which a 500 horsepower engine is more than capable of pulling through the American roads. On the other hand, in Europe, where there are 27 different countries, each with its own rules, it's a different story. Trucks there often need more powerful engines to handle different kinds of roads and carry heavier loads. 
Here, the weight limit in most places is 44 tons. However, many Nordic countries have weight limits exceeding 80, 90, and some even over 100 tons. Here, the 500 horsepower engine simply isn't enough, and that's why bigger engines are used. Landscape and Infrastructure The difference in landscapes and infrastructures also helps explain why there's a gap in horsepower between the US and Europe. The US has mostly flat terrain, and its roads don't have many steep climbs. Here, the roads are bigger, longer, and straight. In Europe, it's the opposite. The varied landscapes mean trucks have to go through smaller roads with big changes in elevation. To handle these challenges, trucks in Europe need more powerful engines, leading to the use of larger and stronger ones. This combination of higher gross weight and steep inclines has made a demand for stronger and bigger engines in Europe, which simply isn't needed in America. Market Demand The engine market of any place is formed by the demand, and in Europe there is a demand for the big engines. They not only want their trucks to perform well, but also to look and sound amazing. For example, some drivers prefer engines like the Scania V8 not just because they're powerful, but because they have a unique and awesome sound. The vast majority of cars in the United States are gasoline-powered. Actually, about 96.8% of passenger cars and light trucks are gasoline-powered. But why is it that the big semi-trucks are all diesel-powered and not driving on gasoline? Well, there are four main reasons for this. Torque matters. Trucks require substantial torque, the twisting force that gets heavy loads moving. Torque provides the necessary muscle to handle these demanding tasks efficiently and safely. It's what allows trucks to start from a standstill, accelerate with heavy loads, and maintain speed while climbing hills or navigating rough terrain. Unlike gasoline engines, diesel engines are built with higher compression ratios. Picture a piston compressing air inside the cylinder before ignition. This compression generates intense heat, causing the diesel fuel to spontaneously ignite when injected. This process results in a powerful, high-torque output, even at low engine speeds. Diesel engines typically have a longer stroke length than gasoline engines. This means that the piston travels further down the cylinder before it reaches the bottom. This longer stroke length gives the piston more time to push against the crankshaft, which produces more torque. In a gasoline engine, the fuel is mixed with air and ignited by a spark plug. This creates a more gradual combustion process, which does not produce as much torque. Also, diesel engines generate their peak torque at lower RPMs, compared to gasoline engines. This low-end torque is particularly beneficial for heavy-duty applications like trucks and industrial machinery, where a strong initial push is required to move heavy loads. So, diesel engines are just way more effective to produce torque than gasoline engines, which is one of the reasons, but it's also because of Fuel Efficiency Diesel engines are more fuel efficient than gasoline engines because they burn fuel more efficiently. Diesel fuel has a higher energy density than gasoline, so it takes less fuel to produce the same amount of power. Diesel engines also have a higher compression ratio than gasoline engines, which means that they can extract more energy from the fuel. This translates to longer driving ranges and reduced fuel costs for trucking companies. Think of it as getting more miles per gallon, critical for long-haul trucks that cross vast distances. A long-haul trucker can drive hundreds of miles on a single tank of diesel, reducing downtime for refueling and increasing productivity. But you might wonder why fuel efficiency is so important for truck companies. Then, let's try and do the math. Diesel engines are typically 20-35% to more fuel efficient than gasoline engines, and the semi-trucks average 6.5 miles per gallon. The annual mileage of a typical long-haul semi-truck driver in the United States is around 100,000 miles, which means a semi-truck would use around $70,000 on diesel a year, whereas a gasoline engine would use around $84,000 for the same miles. And imagine you have 10 trucks. 
then it suddenly means a lot to your company's existence, whether you are fuel economical or not. This would also require bigger fuel tanks, which affect your payload, or you would have to stop to refuel way more often. And here, we have not even included in the calculation the costs of services and maintenance, which we delve deeper into now. Durability Matters Trucks endure harsh conditions daily. Durability is a non-negotiable requirement. Diesel engines are built with heavier and more robust components. They have stronger crankshafts, connecting rods, pistons, and cylinder heads. This sturdier construction allows them to withstand the higher compression ratios and greater stresses associated with diesel combustion. Diesel engines generate their peak torque at lower RPMs compared to gasoline engines. This means that they operate within a narrower and less stressful RPM range, resulting in reduced wear and tear on engine components. The stronger engine components and lower RPM operation result in less wear and tear over time, resulting in diesel engines being able to drive longer before needing service and maintenance. Diesel engines often require less frequent maintenance and fewer parts replacements, contributing to lower overall operating costs and reducing downtime. Furthermore, diesel engines typically have longer lifespans than gasoline engines when properly maintained, which is why you also see semi-trucks exceeding 1 million and some even 2 million miles. But another crucial reason that semi-trucks use diesel and not gasoline is emissions control, meeting regulations. When comparing the carbon dioxide CO2 emissions of diesel and gasoline semi-trucks, diesel trucks typically emit less CO2 per unit of energy produced. This is due to the higher energy density of diesel fuel and the greater thermal efficiency of diesel engines. Diesel engines are generally more fuel efficient than gasoline engines, especially in heavy-duty applications like semi-trucks. Because they extract more energy from each gallon of fuel, they produce fewer CO2 emissions per mile traveled. Diesel engines historically produced higher levels of pollutants like nitrogen oxides and particulate matter. However, advancements like selective catalytic reduction SCR, and diesel particulate filters DPF, have made modern diesel engines much cleaner. They now meet or exceed stringent emission standards, allowing trucks to run responsibly while minimizing environmental impact. Have you ever wondered why some trucks have such incredibly long wheelbases? Today, we'll dive into the fascinating world of truck design to uncover the hidden secrets behind those extended frames and why a too long wheelbase might get you in trouble. How it's measured. First, let's clarify what a wheelbase is and how it's measured. A truck's wheelbase refers to the distance between the centers of its front and rear axles. It's a critical measurement in vehicle design as it affects various aspects of the truck's performance, stability, comfort, and handling. The wheelbase plays a significant role in determining how the weight of the vehicle is distributed and how it behaves on the road. The measurement is usually expressed in inches or centimeters, depending on the region and the measurement system used. But what are the advantages and disadvantages of a long wheelbase? Long wheelbase trucks offer several advantages. A longer wheelbase tends to offer greater stability, especially at higher speeds. This stability is especially crucial when carrying heavy or oversized loads. Additionally, the elongated design allows for better weight distribution. This even weight distribution reduces stress on individual axles, tires, and suspension components. It also minimizes wear and tear on road surfaces and infrastructure, contributing to road safety and preservation. Longer wheelbases accommodate larger and heavier loads due to improved weight distribution. This is vital for industries requiring bulk transport, like construction and heavy machinery. Longer wheelbases contribute to a smoother and more comfortable ride for drivers and passengers. The extended distance between axles helps absorb road irregularities and vibrations, resulting in reduced jolts and shocks within the cabin. 
This is particularly important for long-haul trucking, where drivers spend extended periods on the road. In the case of long-haul trucks, longer wheelbases provide space for bigger sleeper cabins. These cabins offer drivers a comfortable space to rest during overnight stops, enhancing their overall well-being and allowing them to adhere to required rest periods while on the road. Disadvantages of Long Wheelbases While longer wheelbases on trucks offer several advantages, they also come with certain disadvantages that need to be considered in the design and operation of these vehicles. One of the primary drawbacks of a longer wheelbase is reduced maneuverability. Trucks with longer wheelbases require more space to make turns and navigate tight corners. This limitation can be especially challenging in urban areas, construction sites, and other environments with limited space. Finding suitable parking spots for trucks with longer wheelbases can be challenging, especially in densely populated urban areas. Also, longer wheelbases can make backing up more challenging, particularly when the driver needs to maneuver the truck in reverse. The longer frame can create blind spots, making it harder to see obstacles and pedestrians behind the truck. Trucks with longer wheelbases may struggle in off-road or uneven terrain. The extended frame can cause the truck to bottom out or get stuck when encountering steep inclines, rough roads, or obstacles. The extended length can lead to a higher center of gravity and reduced traction, potentially impacting the truck's ability to climb hills efficiently. Lastly, trucks with very long wheelbases might need a reinforced frame to be able to withstand weight load, which increases the total weight and thus can have a negative effect on the truck's total payload capacity. Hey there, truck enthusiasts. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will tell you why the production of the popular V8 semi-truck engine was quietly phased out at the end of the 80s, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of the V8 and why all manufacturers now only use inline-six engines. So, let's dive right into it. Back in the 1960s, it was possible to choose a V8 engine for your semi-truck. Here were popular models like the Mac E9, Peterbilt 359, Kenworth W900, Freightliner WFT, and International Transtar 430 were some of the models available. One of the most popular V8 engines was the Cat 3408. It was first introduced in the 1970s and discontinued around 1985, but is still used in marine vessels, power generation, and construction. Today, all truck manufacturers use inline-six engines, and there are several reasons for that. One of them being that inline-six engines typically have longer strokes, which result in higher torque output. The longer stroke allows for increased displacement, enabling the engine to generate significant power. Today, the engine is so thoroughly developed that it's possible to extract so much horsepower and torque from the inline-six engines that there is simply no reason to go up a size in the V8. As an example, the strong Detroit DD16 can deliver up to 2,050 pounds per foot and 600 horsepower, and the Cummins X15 up to 2,050 pounds per foot and 605 horsepower, which is more than enough especially taking America's limit of weight into account, where the federal limits are 80,000 pounds gross vehicle weight. The European truck brand Scania still produces V8 engines with up to 770 horsepower and 2,730 pounds per foot, but several countries in Europe also have a permitted total weight of up to over 200,000 pounds, which is why the extra horsepower and torque may be necessary here. The reason why interest in V8 engines decreased was also for economic reasons. The inline-six engine's longer stroke and higher torque output allow it to operate at lower RPMs while maintaining performance. This lower RPM operation contributes to improved fuel efficiency, making it advantageous for long-haul applications where fuel consumption is a major concern. 
the inline six engine's fuel efficiency can result in reduced operating costs for trucking companies. It's not only the fuel consumption which is higher on the V8 engine, so is service and maintenance cost. Inline six engines are generally easier to service and maintain compared to engines with a V configuration. The inline layout simplifies access to engine components, including injectors, valves, and camshafts. This ease of serviceability reduces downtime and maintenance costs, ensuring more efficient operation of the truck. But V8 engines are also more complex and have more parts. For example, they have two camshafts, one for each bank of cylinders, and multiple valves per cylinder resulting in a more complex valve train system, and of course, two cylinders more, which result in more and higher maintenance expenses. In addition, V8 engines typically also had a significantly higher initial price than inline six, as it is expensive to manufacture and develop this type of engine, and therefore costs more for the consumer. Also, the inline six engine has a longer and narrower profile compared to V8 engines. This design allows for better packaging within the truck chassis, maximizing available space. The longer shape of the inline six engine facilitates easier installation, serviceability, and maintenance access, which are crucial factors in the trucking industry. Another big part of why manufacturers stopped making V8 semi-truck engines was due to emissions regulations. As environmental concerns grew and emission regulations became more stringent, manufacturers had to focus on developing engines that complied with these regulations. V8 engines generally have a higher displacement and produce higher emissions compared to inline six engines. To meet the emission standards, truck manufacturers shifted their focus to inline six engines, which offered better emission control technologies and fuel efficiency. The emission standards are tightened year after year, and the trucks are allowed to emit virtually no emissions. This has great costs for the manufacturers, who must constantly develop and improve their engine. Have you ever heard people talk about a 4x2 or 6x4 and thought, what on earth does that mean? Then you have come to the right video, as we will explain to you the meaning of the different axle configurations and talk about the advantages of each of them. So what do the numbers mean? To know the difference between the different types of trucks and to know how many wheels it has, whether they are towing and whether the axle is rotatable, you use axle configuration numbers that tell you which vehicle you are dealing with. So let's take a look at the different axle configurations. Four by two means that there are four wheels on the vehicle and two of them are powered. So there is a front axle that turns and a rear axle where the power from the powertrain is delivered to. The configuration is very common on trucks around in Europe, as it is a very fuel-friendly configuration. You don't have unnecessary axles to worry about, which cost weight and fuel. Also, you typically have a shorter turning radius, which makes it more maneuverable. This is typically used for long-distance transport, with a fixed trailer behind, and fits perfectly with most weight limits around in Europe. Four by four means that you have four wheels on the vehicle and that four of them are powered. So it has power on the wheels on both the front and the rear. This configuration is used on trucks who need good grip or for off-road driving, as it has increased traction and stability, which makes them great at handling adverse weather conditions, whether we are talking snow, mud, and so on. However, they are typically more expensive to purchase and more expensive to maintain. Six by two means that there are six wheels on the vehicle and that two of them are powered. A six by two can be a six by two hyphenated two, which means that there is a trailing axle, also known as a tag axle. Some brands also use the little star symbol, also called asterisk, to symbolize the tag axle, where a slash in the end means there is a forward axle, which both typically is liftable. The number behind the hyphen or slash 
tells us if the axle is rotatable, if it's a 2, it's fixed, and if it's a 4, it's rotatable. Some also refer to them as a pusher and boogie and twin steer, if the forward axle is rotatable. The 6x2 configuration is very common and is probably the most used configuration in Europe. This truck has three axles and is able with a three or four axle trailer to transport weights of up to over 60 tons, as some countries allow, and just fit in most weight and length rules around the world. Then when you're not carrying weight, you are able to lift the trailing or forward axle, which provides fuel savings and less wear and tear on tires and brakes. In addition, this type of truck also has a lower weight than a tandem, which we will get to in a moment. The 6x4 means that there are 6 wheels on the vehicle and that 4 of them are powered, also known as a tandem. Here, both your rear axles are powered by the powertrain all the time, which gives a great traction in all weather conditions. This type of configuration is commonly used in America because they are allowed to drive with 34,000 pounds on a tandem axle, where a single axle only is allowed to 20,000 pounds. This configuration is not as fuel efficient as the 6x2, as the tandem axle weighs more and you have greater tire wear. However, it does not matter so much if you depend on the possibility of the extra weight. In addition, you significantly minimize the chance of getting stuck. The 6x6 is a serious off-roader, with six wheels on the vehicle and where all six are powered. This is a powerful truck, which can drive through almost any surface or terrain, which is also why this configuration is typically used on military vehicles, fire trucks, or other specially made trucks. This is typically an expensive configuration, which has poor fuel economy and which also often has very strong springs that provide poor driving comfort. You must really need the traction and the good grip to choose this configuration. That's why they are not so common. Now we have reached four axle vehicles, which is an 8x2, meaning that there are eight wheels on the vehicle and that two of them are powered. This type of truck is also with either a trailing or forward axle, or both. The axles can be placed as two and two or one and three, depending on what the truck is going to drive with or how it's going to be built. So the weight of the truck is placed where the wheels are. If the 8x2 has three axles that are rotatable, it's called an 8x2-6 because there are six wheels which can turn. This type of configuration makes the truck very maneuverable, despite being a long vehicle. The 8x2 is commonly used on trucks constructed with a crane and pallet, or with a hook lift, which offers good opportunities for driving in the city, with its good turning radius. In addition, it also has a weight and fuel advantage compared to an 8x4. The 8x4 is a truck with four axles. It has eight wheels where four of them are powered so that it has a tandem pulling axle. This type of configuration can also be with a trailing or forward axle depending on whether the axle which is not pulling is behind or in front of the powered axles. This type of truck is commonly used in many countries as it has great grip as well as the possibility to choose the location of the axles depending on the weight distribution of the construction. The 8x8 is the king of off-roading. This type of truck has all-wheel drive on all four axles and is mostly used for military use. This is typically an expensive configuration which has poor fuel economy and which also often has very strong springs that provide poor driving comfort. You must really need the traction and the good grip to choose this configuration. That's why they are not so common. Why Trucks with Stick Shifts Are Going Extinct Today, we're diving deep into the world of truck transmissions. Over the years, there's been a significant shift in the trucking industry, with more and more trucks being equipped with automatic transmissions instead of manuals. In this video, we'll explore the reasons behind this change, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of both transmission types, shed light on why trucks need gears, delve into the fascinating history of truck transmissions, and much more. So, let's rev up and get started. Why do trucks need gears? Have you ever wondered why trucks need multiple gears? 
Well, the answer lies in optimizing performance for different driving conditions. Trucks have a wide range of gear ratios to handle various situations, such as starting from a standstill, climbing steep inclines, cruising at high speeds, and even braking. Gears allow the engine to operate within its most efficient RPM range for each situation, optimizing power delivery and fuel efficiency. In a manual transmission, also known as a standard or stick shift transmission, the driver is responsible for manually selecting the gears using a gear shift lever and a clutch pedal. In an automatic transmission or automated manual transmission, AMT, the process of shifting gears is handled automatically by the transmission's hydraulic and electronic systems, and all the driver has to do is press the speeder. The number of gears in a semi-truck transmission can vary depending on the manufacturer, the application, and the engine. However, the most common number of gears for a semi-truck transmission is from 10 to 18 gears. The shift to automatic transmissions. In recent years, there's been a noticeable shift towards automatic transmissions in trucks. In 2023, an estimated 90% of new semi-trucks sold in North America have automatic transmissions. This is up from just 50% in 2010. One of the primary reasons for this shift is the increasing demand for driver comfort and ease of operation. Automatic transmissions eliminate the need for constant gear shifting, making long hauls less fatiguing for drivers. Additionally, automatic transmissions are becoming more efficient and reliable, offering improved fuel economy and reduced wear and tear. This has led to increased interest from trucking companies looking to cut operational costs. The price difference between an automatic transmission and a manual has also become smaller and smaller, and several truck manufacturers now offer automatic transmissions as standard. Advantages of automatic Convenience Automatic transmissions allow drivers to focus on driving rather than shifting gears, which can be tiring and distracting on long hauls. Fuel economy Automated transmissions can shift gears more precisely and efficiently than manual transmissions, which can save fuel. Reduced driver fatigue Automated transmissions can help to reduce driver fatigue by eliminating the need to constantly shift gears. This can improve safety and productivity. Improved performance Automated transmissions can provide better performance in certain situations, such as when starting uphill or towing a heavy load. Less maintenance Automated transmissions require less maintenance than manual transmissions. Disadvantages of automatic Initial cost Automated transmissions are more expensive than manual transmissions. Complexity Automated transmissions are more complex than manual transmissions, which can make them more difficult to repair. Lack of control Some drivers may feel that they have less control over the truck when it is equipped with an automated transmission. However, the best transmission type for you will depend on your individual needs and preferences. The Future of Truck Transmissions As we move forward, the transition to electric vehicles, EVs, is on the horizon. EVs bring a new dimension to the transmission landscape as they operate without the need for traditional gears. Electric motors provide instantaneous torque, eliminating the need for multiple gears to accommodate different driving conditions. While electric trucks are still relatively rare on the road today, they're expected to play a significant role in the future of transportation. As the technology continues to evolve, the manual transmissions could disappear completely someday. Yet, there's sentimental value attached to manual transmissions that some drivers can't shake. For trucking enthusiasts, the feeling of control and connection with the vehicle that comes with manually shifting gears is irreplaceable. It's a skill that they hold dear, rooted in the art of driving itself. As technology continues to advance, 
we can expect further improvements in both automatic and manual transmissions, catering to the diverse needs of trucking professionals. Whether it's the convenience of automatic or the control of manual, the world of truck transmissions is undoubtedly an exciting one. We hope this ultimate truck education has left you not only with answers to your burning questions, but also with a newfound appreciation for the diverse, powerful, and purposeful machines that shape the backbone of our transportation systems. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. Keep the curiosity alive, the engines roaring, and the highways rolling. Until next time, safe travels on the open road.